favorite exercises is the Turkish get up. And that's for a number of reasons. I really like it for shoulder stability, for body coordination and body awareness in general. And I like doing it as a way to get more emphasis on hip extension or glute bridging, which you don't have to do in a Turkish get up. But in this version that I'm going to show you, this is one of the reasons why I like to do it. And the fourth reason that I like it is because it helps with tracking, or it's another exercise where we can look at knee tracking that we'd be using, for example, in a lunge. You can do it with body weight, or you can do it with weight. Um, conventionally, you'll do it with a kettlebell. I'm not a super fan of kettlebells myself for Turkish get-ups, because I don't like when I have a heavy kettlebell and it's rubbing along my forearm, so I use a dumbbell. I think if you're using a kettlebell bottom up, like an upside down kettlebell, that'll really add to the stability part. Um, but you could use anything or nothing for weight if your goal is body awareness and control. I like the weight because it makes the shoulder stability part a little bit more challenging. So we'll go through without weight and then I'll show you with the weight. I'll show you from both or from two different angles so that you can see what I'm talking about and the different aspects of why I like this exercise. So for setting it up, I like to put the foot right in line with the knee both legs just straight out. Left arm out to the side, just below or above shoulder height. And my leg that's up, that same arm is gonna be straight up and down. We'll try to keep it vertical the whole time. Throughout this exercise, we're gonna keep the foot of the bent leg in contact with the ground. The whole foot in contact with the ground. It's kind of like when you do a squat and you wanna have the whole foot in contact with the ground or a lunge or whatever other exercise we're doing. So we're going to keep that in mind as we do this exercise. So as we come up, we'll come up on the forearm first and then the hand and we're going to lift up through the chest. I'm going to bridge up squeezing in the butt for a hip extension, then lower the hips and bring that leg, the front leg back underneath us. When we turn around we're trying to get something like a 90 degree angle in both legs similar to where you would be in a lunge or even in a split squat. And then standing up, squeezing the glute max of the front leg, just like we would drive the hips through for a lunge. We end up at the top, butt squeezed, arms still overhead. We do the same thing in reverse. Take the lunge step back, turn the body to the side, put the hand down right where it was on the way up. Leg comes through, we can plant the heel here to encourage us to squeeze and push up to the ceiling and not the side. Hips come back down, back to the forearm, and then on the back. So when we have no weight in the hand, the arm can kind of float around a bit. When you start adding weight, you begin to become aware of what position your shoulder's in. It'll be easiest to do this with the weight if you can keep your joints stacked, wrist, elbow, shoulder, no matter what position. The farther you get away from that stacking, the more work it's going to be to stabilize the shoulder. So adding some weight is going to teach you how to keep your joints in line. When we're looking at this exercise head-on, I'll show you the tracking part. So when we're looking from this angle, you can really see what's going on with tracking in the front leg. And that's keeping the thigh straight when we're going up and down out of that lunge position but also looking at getting external rotation in glute max that's going to help to turn that leg out, which is the same thing that we're trying to do when we're trying to get glute max going in squat or a lunge or a step up or whatever exercise we're looking at. So glute max has two things, mainly hip extension. So when we squat and come up again, that's hip extension done by glute max. Glute max also does hip external rotation. So if you're just standing here and you squeeze your butt, you can hopefully learn how to do this with external rotation. And you can sort of think of like gears turning this way. And that's what your butt's doing, squeezing together to get you into good hip extension and like a hip lockout, we would say. So if you're squatting and you tend to have legs that don't track straight, learning how to get that external rotation is going to help. It also helps you come up out of the hole in a squat if you can learn to do that right from the bottom of your squat. So when we're looking at glute bridging, which is what happens 
in this version of the Turkish getup, we can make sure that we're doing the glute bridge with hip extension and external rotation. So we're going to come up on the forearm, up on the hand, remember to lift the chest up nice and tall. We're going to bridge up, squeezing in glute max, get hip extension, and working that external rotation so we don't want to be coming this way. And lower the hips a little bit to make easy space for the body to come underneath and bring that front leg back. We're going to turn around to be square to the front. If we end up super wide or very narrow, we can always just fix it so that we're coming up out of a nice solid position. From here, paying attention to the direction that the thigh tracks to stand up. And we're standing up driving the hips forward, especially that front leg side. Good hip extension and glute max. Same thing in reverse. Lunge back, paying attention to tracking. Then we can turn the body, hand back down, bring the leg back through. Again, we'll do a glute bridge so that we can work on hip extension and try to get that external rotation component in. Put the hips back down, forearm, and whole body back down. So when we're watching from this side, we really get an idea of getting the hips working in the lunge part. So same steps. We're set up with the foot and knee about in line. This arm is vertical, and the other arm is out just below shoulder height for me. So we're up on the forearm, and the hand lifting the chest nice and tall. Bridge up, squeezing in glute max, try and get some external rotation going on. Drop the hips, bring the leg underneath, and turn around to face the front. Hopefully, we get 90 degrees in the front leg and 90 degrees in the back leg, or somewhere close. And then as we stand up, we're squeezing through glute max on this front leg to drive into hip extension. So we end up nice and tall, butt squeeze, hips forward to be underneath the shoulders. Same position you would be in at the top of a deadlift or a squat or when you're doing an overhead press or whatever it is. That's like our glute squeeze lockout position. Step back, same steps. Hopefully getting something close to 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Turn the body to the side, put the hand down. The leg comes through, squeeze up to the ceiling, remembering to work on that external rotation component in the front leg. Hips come back down, forearm, and back down. So with extra weight, or with weight in general, it's going to force this arm to remain more vertical. As soon as it goes out, all the muscles around the shoulder, especially the rotator cuff, are going to fire over time, trying to keep the head of the humerus centered inside the glenoid fossa of the scapula. A lot more comfortable and a lot simpler to do that if we can keep the joints stacked. And that's where adding weight becomes useful. If we can get in those positions in the first place without weight, then we'll do it with weight. So coming up on the forearm, and then the hand, squeezing through glute max, getting good hip extension and external rotation. We drop the hips to make room to bring the front leg back. We turn around, squeeze through the butt to grab the hips forward, paying attention to tracking. Lunge step back, turn the body to the side. Hand comes down where it started. Leg comes through. Good squeeze for hip extension, external rotation, and glute max. Drop the hips back down, forearm back down on the ground. Roll the weight up. Foot's in line with the knee, arms out at above shoulder height. Come up on the forearm and then the hand. Squeeze through glute max, get hip extension, external rotation. Drop the hips a bit to make space for the leg to come back. Turn around, face straight ahead. Squeeze in the butt. With the front leg especially, maintain the good thigh tracking to stand up, butt still squeezed. Lunge back, good tracking on the way down, turn the body to the side, leg comes through, good hip extension, external rotation, squeeze through glute max, hips down, come back down to the floor, and roll the weight back down. So that's one of my favorite exercises, the Turkish get up, done with extra hip extension so that we can work on shoulder stability, 
general coordination and body awareness, making sure that we get good hip extension, including hip external rotation out of our glute max, and paying attention to lunge mechanics, driving the hip forward to come up in the lunge, and paying attention to tracking. 